Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. This is Miles Luigi. After entering this room, you sure it looks like an innocuous pair Goomba, Polo Goomba, and attack him. And that's why. Alright, from the innocuous Goomba we go on, there's uh, Dry Bones, or we're gonna now pull out Coops and fail to attack him first. Oh well. Alright, so after the little trick we made into this cast, we come to this room, which obviously shows itself to be where the jail cells are, so whatever purpose this castle served. Um, you look at the jail cells and you're like, hmm, I wonder who built this place, but his what is the history of this place? Part of you wanted to say, well, maybe this castle was built by dragons, which is why it has no historical significance, and well, no, I'm stuck in here. But, uh, the place just doesn't feel like it was, uh, built by dragons, just looking at the proportions of everything. Anyway, we can see another black chest. If you remember correctly, the last black chest totally cursed me. Um, some of you pointed out that I did call the person in the chest a jerk, and it actually turns out they used to be a hero that's in there. That's a folktale. But anyway, blah blah blah. <laughs> Actually, it's probably true that the guys in these chests are heroes and they're out to curse who is ever going to become the next hero because they want to keep the spotlight and fame, possibly? I don't know. But anyway, we have to save them, otherwise I have no absolute way of getting out of here. You know, I can't get out of the window, despite the fact that this window is slightly broken through. Mario can't fit his papery body in there! So now we have to go to the next room. Well, this room looks a little menacing. There appears to be spots where there will be spikes on the floor. Notice a path that we could take, or we don't have to run through any spikes. Through this way, and then back through this way, and then kind of to here. That's important to remember. Because the moment we open this black key box, open the chest, activates a mechanism that causes spikes to appear, and oh my gosh, the ceiling is descending. Oh no. <laughs> we gotta run. And a cool digital timer comes out and tells us exactly how much time we have left before the ceiling comes down, crushes us, and gives us a game over. Thankfully we have plenty of time, so even though we can't spin through all this, I can, well, run... run. <laughs> run briskly through the maze and get out of there without any trouble. Anyway, we get the black key, so now we can go ahead and get ourselves cursed again by another legendary hero, I mean jerk. <laughs> As he calls me a fool, he calls me many things that mean idiot. Many synonyms of idiots. Let's look through how many synonyms here of idiots. The most idiotic, puddled brain dolt. Prevent anyone from entering this place from ever leaving. So then, this castle may have existed thousands of years ago. Ooh, cool, we get a curse too. So the castle's traps prevent anyone from leaving. So of course we get a curse that we will soon find out allows us to leave where we're stuck. Press and hold R, just hold R, otherwise he's gonna be like, You fool! Press R again! Anyway, yeah, I understand what the curse means to me. But yeah, if you just press R and let go, he's like, You fool! Hold R! Do it again. You fool! Hold R! You fool! Hold R! Anyway, holding R lets us, well, become paper with respect to a different dimension than our original dimension, allowing us to easily slip through bars like this and get stuff like the Attack FXR badge. Attack FXR badge. Hmm, now. First off, organize Attack FXR. I'm gonna go ahead and put on this badge. It makes me sound like a cricket. Okay. I feel like that was a clue to something before. I wonder what it is. Hmm. I'll let you guys figure it out. Anyway. Now that we've got our ability to shift which dimension our paper folds through, we're going to go ahead and get a key that we were unable to get before because it was behind the bars. Right back in this room where we, uh... Well, not quite this room. We have to go left a little bit further. Maybe run into an enemy or two. Are they all going to stay down for me? They are all going to stay down for me. Woohoo! Alright, back in this room, there is a key hiding behind the bars. Now, there are some horizontal bars preventing people from sneaking in, except this one section, which was constructed specifically to allow the hero who gets the curse to fold himself into the bars, or somebody who can break the bars, <laughs> to slip through. Or maybe a really tiny cr creature to slip through and grab the key and, get, and continue on with the castle. I definitely do not feel like I'm trapped inside this castle, built thousands of years ago, and has absolutely no historical significance at the same time. It was built by dragons! But then that makes no sense, because it's not proportionally fit for a dragon. Anyway, here, we see a little block here, if we hit it with Mario, we can't get back on it. We 
allow Koops to hit it, he'll bounce right off it and come right back on the pl platform just like that. So he doesn't get lost down there. That would be unfortunate. Now if we go up this staircase, we will see a badge that we are unable to get right now. We'll get it soon enough. Just go ahead and open this door. Alright. In the room ahead, we can see another healing block. Um, technically, I can stand to use some items because I will be getting some soon. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a mushroom on Mario. Watch the animation play out. There is no eating animation in Paper Mario and the Thousand Girl, which is a little unfortunate, but it really wasn't needed too badly. Still, watch Mario going up, rub, rub, rub. was one of the hilarious parts of the original Paper Mario. Hit the switch, and like magic, little pieces of paper come folding out of the foreground, creating a bridge. And we get to do it again, except this time we have to send Koops over, kick him over the ledge, and watch the foreground once again create a bridge. As you can see, the foreground there actually peeled off a little piece of Mario, but Mario is completely unharmed. Walk over here, find Starpiece. <laughs> Stay back here. Go to the left, and come down here, and voila. Just like that, we made it through the last gap, which there's no switch to uh, get across that gap. And this Dull Bones is going to die. Voila. Now then, is this Dull Bones alive? Is there another alive Dead Bones? Okay, good. Another switch, just like before. Once again, we're going to use Koop's great ability to bounce off that block and come back on this platform, so we leave no one behind. If you look over there, you will see a life shroom. We can get that life shroom, but I'll get in just a little bit. Let me enter this door first. Actually, let me fight this enemy first. Go ahead and enter in this door. We will meet something interesting, or someone interesting specifically. It appears we are not alone in this castle. Yikes. Who is this mysterious person? Miss Moas, the globe trotting thief. <laughs> Goes out around the world and grabs badges, rare badges, for her own personal collection. Anyway, we mentioned the crystal star, and she's like, hmm, perhaps you shouldn't have told us that, but that's alright. I'm a thief. Thieves don't fight dragons, so you can go ahead and get the crystal star. Walks up to Mario, and holy cow, get off me. <laughs> and slips away really quickly. So no one gets out of this castle, huh? This thief managed to get in and out of this castle pretty easily, so... Anyway, she tells us there's a badge she recommends we grab before we fight Hooktail. Hmm. It has to do with a cur and an ikit. Hmm. Anyway, a bunch of treasure chests here. One has a mushroom, one has a castle key, there's another shine sprite, and down here is a honey syrup. It appears this chest has been opened, and if we were to believe Miss Moa's, there is a badge in there. Curses. Fall down here, use our flip dimension ability, and we get a life shroom! Ah, the lovely little life shroom. Great life insurance! Quite simply, you die! And the life shroom brings you back to life, so instead of going to wherever video game heaven, hell, purgatory, in the case of Paper Mario, they actually have names, but we won't find out about that till a later Paper Mario game, and I fell off the ledge. Anyway. Little thing to side note about Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. If your partner dies and you're holding the life shroom, the life shroom will bring them back to life. This can't stump you up if you plan on using that life shroom as life insurance for Mario, because your partner can die and Mario can still go on. But if Mario dies, it doesn't matter if every single partner has full vitality, they can't go on without Mario and the game is over. And Mario goes to video game heaven or hell. <laughs> Okay, and we got the struck first. Wonderful. 